Okay, so obviously I didn't watch a million movies, but it got you to click on the video, right? It was actually more like 40 films, which is still a lot when you think about it, and you're here now anyway, so let's go. I'm going to go through each of the films I watched and sum them up as quickly as possible in a somewhat spoiler-free fashion. You have been warned. If you guys enjoy me listing 40 films with my opinion of each, then please subscribe because the rest of my videos are nothing like this. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. On the first day I watched The Tree of Life, and it was basically a suburban space odyssey mixed with Tarkovsky's mirror, so it was good, but all I'll say is watching the extended version was a mistake. Spirit Away was the first anime I ever watched. If it even counts as an anime, I'm no expert. And I thought it was really good. It was honestly weird as shit, but I loved it, and I think that what sets it apart is its score. Looking back, it's the music that stayed with me the most. The Lighthouse was phenomenal. Willem Dafoe was absolutely robbed of at least a nomination for his performance. And Jaren Blash probably butchered that. Sorry, Jaren. The cinematographer, I feel, did a better job than Roger Deakin for 1917 and should have won the Oscar. All I'll say negatively is that the ending left me wanting more, but I won't spoil anything. American Beauty. The less said about Kevin Spacey's role as a dad in love with his high school daughter's friend, the better, given the recent allegations. However, every single character was really interesting and the film had an amazing ending. If you aren't going to watch this one, I beg you to at least watch the plastic bag scene on YouTube. It really is the best moment in the film. If I remember, I'll leave the link down in the description. Okay, so I've obviously seen Grease before, but I couldn't bring myself to watch Annie Hall on that night, so I went for the guilty pleasure. Honestly, you're missing out if you haven't seen Grease. It's probably the best musical behind La La Land and that is not up for debate. Annie Hall. I'll be honest, I really didn't fucking like it. Which is controversial I know, but hear me out. I just found Alan's chaotic style abrasive and I really didn't like his character, or him. The constant fourth wall breaks were jarring and I found it all pretty dated. But who am I? Rushmore. Idiosyncratic as hell, but not as good as the Grand Budapest Hotel with the Royal Tenenbaums. Although this was his first, so credit to him. Him being Wes Anderson. It was unpredictable and very dry, which is a good thing. Bill Murray as ever was amazing. Interesting fact, Murray has been in every Anderson film since Rushmore. I've got halfway through making this and realised there's no way I'm fitting 40 film reviews into one video, because I didn't want my first video to be more than like 5 minutes. So hopefully you guys enjoy this enough for me to make a second part. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to smash that like button. If you're not enjoying it, what are you still doing here? Find something better to do. American Graffiti is a stone cold American classic, but I thought it was shit. That's probably down to my age and how old the film is, but regardless I did enjoy it. And it's no way near as good as its more recent counterpart Days to Confused, which is one of my favourite films. Not as bad as Annie Hall though. Badlands hasn't aged as well as the other films from the 70s. <coughs> Taxi Driver. <coughs> The Godfather, <coughs> not American Graffiti. But the atmosphere created by Terence Malick is perfect and quite similar to Tree of Life. He did direct both after all. Parasite is amazing. I don't understand how it got any hate from the Western audience, other than the one inch barrier Bong spoke about. Anyone that takes the time to sit down and watch it will enjoy it. It deserved its awards for being a brilliantly crafted suspenseful story from start to finish. Tarkovsky's Mirror is one of the strangest films I've ever watched. It was beautiful and haunting. The dreams and memories of a dying man resonate strongly. I want to say more about this film, but I think I'll save that for another video because it definitely deserves it. The Before Sunrise films are up there with The Lord of the Rings as one of the best trilogies ever. No, I'm not joking. Linklater and co always find a way to make their dialogue interesting. No one else could make two people talking so engaging and so painfully powerful and spirited through three feature length films. Before Midnight is a fantastic end to an 18 year trilogy that hasn't lost any of its initial magic and sensitivity throughout. Waves was great, a powerful film that deserves a hell of a lot more recognition, despite how bleak it is. There's a lot of promise for the acting future of Kelvin Harrison Jr. Oh, and the cinematography was brilliant. In the Mood for Love was engaging and beautifully constructed, 
but I felt like it was missing something in regard to the story, with quite a difficult ending. What's not to like about Zodiac? A mystery crime thriller directed by David Fincher, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. It's messed up, but not as messed up as Fincher's Seven. Cynic Docky, Cynic Doc, New York. E is for existentialism. E is also for Enigma. This is one of the strangest, most complex films I've ever watched. And it took about an hour of reading through forums and threads to finally really understand the meaning of the film. I did not expect The Beautiful Mind to be so federal or political. I was expecting more like Good Will Hunting, but Crow was still fantastic. Also, a very powerful performance from Jennifer Connelly. Alright, thank you for watching. Obviously, this was my first commentary video on the channel, so I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 12,000 subs. It's crazy how well this channel's already done. Let me know what you thought of this one and leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments.